Hi, everyone. Great. <laughs> Everything working fine. That's cool. Um, thanks for being here first and to listen to our talk about Node.js, what's next, and how we can like working and catalyzing change in the Node.js ecosystem. And we will be, as you can see, two to present that to you. So I'm Jean Biolier. I'm working at Sanofi, leading the platform team there. I'm also working for Superfo, which is a French university, as a professor there. And you can find me on multiple parts of the Node.js ecosystem, mainly the Next10 community, the example one also. And I'm also part of some other open source project, mostly around JavaScript. You can follow me on Twitter or X, I don't know, uh, GitHub, also LinkedIn, or pretty much everything. And with me, Michael. Hello, yeah, I'm Michael Dawson. I'm the Node.js lead for Red Hat and IBM. What that means is I get to spend a lot of time in the community, which is great, working with uh, the collaborators, a member of uh, a bunch of the working groups and teams, and just generally active across the, the project. I also get to be involved in the OpenJS Foundation, um, as well as working, working with a bunch of great teams within Red Hat and IBM who either deploy Node.js at scale, help our customers do that, or build tools to make it easier for you to be able to deploy Node.js in your production deployments. So just before we get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to try and cover today so you have an idea of what we're going to go through. First of all, we're going to talk about how do you follow what's next. It's great that we're going to give you a little bit of an insight into what's new and next today, but we want to give you some tools to be able to follow that and figure that out yourself if you want to dur during across the year. We'll then jump into some recent features. Everybody likes to know about what's new in Node itself, so we'll talk about some features. We'll then talk about the Next10 team, where we try and look more proactively as, in terms of what we should be doing to ensure success in Node for the next 10 years. Um, we're going to go over a few of the, the new teams and initiatives that we think are particularly interesting. And then finally, we'll end up with a little bit of like, how could you get involved if you want to, to help out and move things forward. So back over to Jean. So first part, um, it's really hard to follow everything that could be happening inside the full Node.js ecosystem just by itself. I think there is something around 200 repository uh, just own and link to Node.js. Um, so that's a lot of work. And there is a lot of things also that you need to follow from. But the main point I think that is really important to all of us, especially I guess this week, would be how to follow releases and what's new in the Node.js ecosystem, new feature or release. So first, big announce. So the version 27, I think, was, was released just yesterday by Ulysses. So congrats to him. And because it was an amazing work. Um, and then 20 branch uh, will go LTS in less than a month, like three weeks, if I'm right. And also one of the good news, and or really important news at least, is Node 16, like, move to end of life, and Node 18 should be the one that you should be using, at least like in production or in everything. Uh, and or 20 like in a few weeks um, and next month we will also release uh, a new branch for the 21 version to try test and experiment new stuff on that which is quite important so quick remember like quick information please update don't use not 16 anymore move to 18 or 20 that would be great um, also well, also some specific point so one way to follow what's happening and what's new in a new version would be our change log. Uh, it can be quite uh, hard for some people to read, so, but at least everything is like easily to, it, let's say, more or less easy to display. You will have see and be able to see like notable change, what's new, what's coming, uh, what's breaking change or not. So this is a good way to follow what's everything being updated on everything. Another way uh, would be to follow GitHub notification and your inbox in GitHub. Um, this can depend where if you follow a lot of different repository or not. I was just checking like five minutes ago. In less than a week, I have more than 1,000 inbox messages. So could be quite hard to follow on everything. But this could be a good way if you want to play also with filter and everything. One good point for everyone, and I know a lot of people are not aware of that, but you can all join us for meetings. So we are like weekly or even daily on multiple topics, uh, working group session that are live you can just check everything on YouTube is being recorded and available on YouTube, or you can just join us. You will find the full calendar at this address, nodejs.org slash calendar. And as you can see, you will have like meeting about multiple topics from next 10 to TSC meeting that you can follow to node API to pretty much everything. So please, if you are interested to work or to 
provide some feedback about Node.js, how you use it. Join us and just share what you know and your love for Node.js. Also, some specific key initiative, um, part of the project, so there is more, but this is a small list of that, from working on performances to single executable to compromise a lot of people and a lot of people that are championing this initiative, so that's pretty cool. And now that we spoke quickly about the key initiative, uh, Michael will talk to you about uh, what's new in the ecosystem and the recent feature that we delivered. Okay, so yeah, everybody's interested in what's new, but I always like to say major releases are boring. Unlike a proprietary product where they basically like control all the release, the, the, the new features and bundle them into something that makes a really good press release, uh, Node.js in particular works to flow those back into earlier releases. So features, by the time we do a, a major release, a lot of the features are already in the previous LTSs. Um, and so, you know, that coupled with the fact that we really try and minimize things that are going to be breaking. And so what you end up with in major releases are just things that we were very cautious usually about. You know, they may break some edge cases or something like that, um, but they can be boring. Semver Minor is where it's at. So all those features which are Semver Minor, they get landed, of course, in the mainstream, but then flow backwards. That's where the, the real interest is. But I think majors are still a really good time to sort of celebrate and talk about the new features that we've gotten over for, for, our, for the last little while. Especially, you know, in the context of the promotion to LTS, the next LTS is being promoted in October. And maybe that's the first time that you can try, try out some of these new features um, in an LTS. Uh, because, you know, even if they've flown back, flowed back to an earlier release, it may have just been one of the currents. So, I'm going to talk about the features in sort of three ways, as opposed to like, hey, what's new in the latest LTS? It's sort of old news, but things that I think are particularly important for you to know about as you move up, say, when you plan your migration to 18.x from version. Um, things that are baking, uh, you know, they've been, they've been worked on for a while and they're making progress, um, and, but maybe they're not uh, stable yet. And then finally, it's sort of the latest, greatest news, which are things which have been released in, in sort of very re more recent times. Um, the first one is OpenSSL. So uh, we upgraded from OpenSSL 1.1.1 to, to version 3. Um, and that did come in uh, 17. So that was a little while ago. Um, but 18 is the first LTS that some, where some people may be sort of running into that. So it's, I think, important to measure, to mention. It's meant to be backwards compatible, but like any sort of future or new versions of, of things related to crypto, they're always tightening down what they consider secure algorithms or secure key lengths. So that's something to think about when you move up and maybe plan a little bit more time because you may find that like an algorithm your application was using is no longer supported or you have to move to larger keys. So that's certainly one, one aspect to think about. The um, other thing is native modules. So there's a bunch of methods that were deprecated. So they're not, you know, your, your native add-ons may still compile, but you might get more deprecation warnings and maybe it's a good time to start thinking about uh, moving up to the newer APIs so that when it, they, they finally are removed, you don't run into a problem. There's a great guide on migration. So if you're as part of planning your, your move up to 18, it's probably a good idea to read through that and figure out if anything's gonna be affecting you. The next thing is the default DNS resolution. So we probably all know that IPv6 is something that's been worked on for quite a long time in the overall ecosystem. Pretty slow transition, I think, overall. Um, and up until this point, Node basically said, well, regardless of the way that the DNS server gives me the addresses, I'll give you the IPv4 ones first, which typically meant that would be what you use to connect. Uh, we decided it was time to start respecting what the DNS servers tell us. So if they give us a list and the IPv6 ones are first, we're going to leave it that way. The challenge that we see people running into, and this happens to me actually all the time, we have a machine that's configured to, so it, it thinks it's got IPv6, but it's really not configured well enough to actually connect out. So it sees that it gets an IPv6 address, it tries to make the connection, it can't. Basically, you know, I try and do an NPM install and it just hangs. Um, not any real problem in Node, but there's enough machines out there that you might run into it. The good news is, is that there's a command line. That's kind of why I wanted to, you know, tell you all about this. If you run into something like that, you can just add the, the dash dash DNS result order equals IPv4 to flip back to the way it was. And you can do that through Node options to fairly easily get back to where you were. The next set of features are the ones that are kind of baking. And these include fetch, WASI, and, and dash dash watts. 
I don't know that any of those will become stable in the next uh, LTS uh, promotion or in 21, but there is some discussion around some of them, so that's a possibility. So fetch was sort of a, a long discussed, um, and at one point we had a next 10 deep dive, which, and John will tell you a little bit more about those deep dives. Well, we had a deep dive where we agreed we kind of wanted to move to the point where we had a, a very high level API for doing HTTP and then a more, or more lower level one that would give you more things where you could tune performance and, and, and do more things. As part of that, we agreed fetch, which was a, a web API, uh, was the right way to provide the higher level API in Node, Node itself. And this just shows the code that, you know, it allows you to very easily without much fuss, uh, pull in the content of, of a URL. Um, you'll also see down here, Jean will talk about some of the, the different technical priorities that the Next 10 has worked on. And on some of the slides I've got like, okay, this is actually in line with our technical priority that modern HTTP is something that's important that, that the project should be working on. And you can see this is one of the things where we're making progress on that front. Um, the next one is uh, WASI. You may have heard a lot about Web WebAssembly. There's quite a lot of sort of buzz and interest about that. Um, Node can run WebAssembly through our, because we use V8, uh, and we have an experimental implementation of WASI. WASM is great as long as you don't need to actually do anything outside with the outside world. WASI lets you connect to the outside world through the file system, through sockets, and so there's an a, 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 um, a experimental implementation that lets you launch your WASM with the WASI environment and, and lets you get access to some of those things. Still really a, a work in progress, but I think one where you know, if you need a, a, a runtime and you're already using Node and you want to use Wasm, you know, it's, it's a great thing to, to consider working, working with. We did make some changes in 20 where uh, the version used to be just default. You now need to actually specify preview one. If you don't, you're going to get an error. We decided that that made sense because we didn't, you know, there's a, the, the ecosystem, Wasm ecosystem is working on a preview two and there'll be a preview three and we didn't want to always default to something which would be out of sort of out of life, and so we want to actually make people force, forcefully, or we want to force them to actually opt into a particular one. The other thing that changed is that you no longer need a command line flag to turn on and use uh, WASI. Um, so sort of one step along the progress, still I think a ways to go, but it's a step along the, the process from you know, a new feature to becoming stable. Uh, watch uh, is one, again, again, in line with the developer experience, where if you're in that inner loop where you're you know, basically making changes. Uh, you may want to make a change, restart your restart node, and this allows you to do it more efficiently. There's a number of command line options that basically let you watch a file, the file that you, you're starting, like, you know, uh, it's like node index.ts or something, or a directory, and anytime there's changes in those, it will automatically restart for you. So just helping you do um, things more quickly. That is sort of an interesting one in that you'll see a number of the features that, that I'm talking about today are kind of in the, we're going to give you a little bit of something you could do through a package. So there are already packages which would let you watch and, and do restarts. Um, but there has been a trend to pull in some basic functionality in different areas so that you don't have to find and install as many packages when you're working with Node. Not necessarily replace those packages, um, but give you the basic functionality so like you know maybe 80% of the people that's going to be good enough. Uh, in terms of features, now sort of hot off the press, um, we had a number of them ranging from like argument parser, a test runner, those are ones that are in that sort of model again of having a little bit more functionality, support for single executable applications, a permission model, diagnostic channel, and support for ARM64. So the argument parser, again, it's like, you know, not meant to replace YARGs or Commander, and the good thing is we really had a lot of collaboration from the existing maintainers of those packages, and they were in support of pulling this in. Um, so we got the benefit of their experience and their expertise, and it gives you a high-level API for actually doing some basic, basic, basic argument parsing. Here's the code where basically, you know, you can set up uh, through that const options, is like, what are the options which I expect to come in? I can easily parse those args. And I get back, you know, basically the, an object which has the parsed arguments, um, letting you do, uh, you know, parse, get your arguments in with a lot less code than you might otherwise have to do or, or pulling in other packages. Uh, a test runner was moved to 20, it's stable in 20, so that was kind of the big headline. You can see through, you know, the addition of mocks, reporters, and coverage, there's been ongoing progress. This is a really good example of 
There's not really any big bang other than it going stable because the functionality has been slowly being added and, and, and being flowed back into the LTS releases as well. But it gives you a test runner where you can easily write a test just uh, through a few requires in the node namespace. I like it because it uses uh, tap output, which is well known, something that I've, I've been familiar with on a number of projects. There's tools for parsing it. Um, and you know you can very easily say I just want to create a test and I want to assert that something is true or not true. Single executable applications. So there's often a case where you want want to write an application that's just like a single binary as opposed to, hey, install Node first, then run these scripts. You'd rather just package it up as like one executable people can run. The single executable feature lets you do that. It actually bundles your JavaScript code into the executable itself, the ones that are available on the, the main download site. It uses a fuse so that like, without having done the bundling, it takes zero overhead because we check this fuse, which is just a, a, you know, a, some, a location that's in memory that you've loaded in from the application. Um, if it's not set, we know it's okay, no, no bundle application, just do the regular thing. Otherwise, it looks for a segment within the executable, finds the code and runs the code. It also has some interesting aspects in terms of security in that you end up with an EXE, which while it can run node applications, when you run it, it only runs the script that you've given it. And sort of can, so that can be, you know, it's something people have mentioned to be as interesting in that it reduces the surface area. Um, you're not saying install node that can now run any kind of script. You're saying install this binary that just runs my one application. So in addition to helping with the easier distribution, it also helps with that reduced surface area, and that's kind of a, an interesting one. Again, still experimental, but being worked through and, and quite interesting. It is only supported on a couple of platforms, I think I said there, um, or actually I don't have that there, but it is on, on a subset of platforms for now. Um, so good to be aware of that. Uh, Process-based permissions. This is something that uh, Rafael has done and put a lot of work into. Um, and it's, it's actually quite difficult to totally control and provide a sandbox and, and node security models specifically that we don't provide a sandbox. But even given that, it's sort of like in my mind, seat belts and airbags, giving as many different tools as we can to help people be as secure as they, they can be, makes sense. And so in this sense, you can turn on the permission model. It will limit some features by default, particularly those like native modules that where basically you can do anything. And then you can allow some things like accessing certain files on the file system. There is also a runtime check that lets you check, like, am I allowed to do this or not? So your application doesn't just fall over. You can check beforehand and decide what to do with that. Um, the tracing channel. So long time effort, the, the diagnostic working group has been working on diagnostics. Observability is really important. I forget which talk it was that I saw yesterday, but like, in production, you want to know what's going on. I think it was the one on transitioning to front to back end. And that, that was one of the comments on the back end. It's much harder to see what's going on. So diagnostics are really important. Um, so diagnostic channel is, 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 has been uh, an approach to let people, instead of having to monkey patch in uh, changes to get diagnostic information, to actually provide a standard model for providing that information. Um, and tracing channel was a recent addition to actually say, let's make that even easier to consume and generate. And tracing channel basically lets you say, I want to trace a certain set of things. And you can say, well, I'm going to trace a synchronous call, a promise, or a callback. And it'll automatically generate the events to the diagnostic channel for you. And similarly, on the consuming side, you can just subscribe to a channel, and it'll give you the events related to that particular channel. This shows the code. You wouldn't obviously do this all in the same program. You know, you'd have either the consumer or the info source, but I have them both together for the example. Couple of requires, and then, you know, in terms of the, the subscriber, you can just subscribe and say, well, I want to see the start, end, and error messages, which will give you the events before or after. Like if, if somebody's traced a, a, a promise, you'll get it before the promise and after the promise and so forth. In terms of the info source, there's an example of like trace sync. So it says, I'm going to trace a synchronous call and you get, you'll get generate the before and end and so forth. So, and then I've got the bottom, I've just run this program and you can see the data that, that's printed out. Uh, the last one is ARM64. So ARM overall, we've seen take, uh, you know, ga gaining in prominence. More people are, are running on ARM, wanting to put into data centers in addition to smaller devices. We've long supported it for Linux, uh, but 
the 19.9, we added support for Windows on ARM, and 20 will become the first LTS where, you know, we've got full support for that. So, at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Jean to talk about the next 10 project. So, what about the next 10? Uh, just a quick story about the, this working group was created in 2019, 2020, just to, let's say, celebrate the 10 years of Node.js ecosystem. And the main idea was to try to find how we can be as successful in the previous, like in the next 10 years as we were in the first 10 years of the ecosystem itself. And for that, we want to prioritize, and we wanted to prioritize when we created this working group, we wanted to really discuss about the technical value and priorities that the node project should follow, but also what would be the main target of people and constituency of people that use Node.js on a daily basis. And we thought it was easy to find like, okay, everyone is a developer, front end or back end, great, that's all. But finally, we found a lot of different categories on that. So just for the technical value, everything is available in the Node.js repository. So if you want to check it and have a full like read through and everything, like it's always a, a, good, a good time to do. Um, but for us, the main idea and the main technical priority, I, don't, I won't go through each of them, but the main is really to focus on developer experience and uh, sustainability as a two main one. But you can also see that we want to have a good experience for everyone that work across the ecosystem from people maintaining uh, Node.js to people creating API, using it on a daily basis or a bit less. So the main idea is to really focus on everyone that work across the ecosystem. Um, the second part is a constituency. And for that, we do have a, quite a good list on that from direct end user application operator to people that produce and create library to Node.js contributor to also organization and specific organization. So we do have quite a list. And one specific area I want to like wait for a few seconds here is like I said, when I presented myself at the start, I'm a professor in university and I was there when we created the first list, uh, the first list of constituency here. Yet we forgot completely about everything linked to education from student, teacher, organization that want people to use and train people to use Node.js. So this is something that we fixed this year, I think, like a few months ago. Yeah, well, I think that we added that after we went actually and did a bit of a survey and got community feedback. And that's a place where they helped us say, oh, yeah, there's some other constituencies that we should actually uh, exactly. think yep. of, which is a great example of like in the next 10 work, the more we can get feedback from the community, the better it's going to end up being. Yeah, exactly. And we come back to a lot more feedback in a few slide, I think. And the last part is what, what is kind of people and everyone need from Node.js for the ecosystem to be successful for people that want to use Node.js and company and corporation. So yet again, we have another list. I won't go through everything, but we can see that the main one is that affects almost everyone, like even everyone is a good understanding of the direction of the project. So what's new, what's being created or thought of by the community and people that want to add new feature. But also, on the other hand, you could have also um, assets of finding ways to display why Node.js is a good choice to be used in your company when you create some specific project. And you can go also through easy installation, innovation, and following what's new in the more global JavaScript ecosystem, not just focus on a back-end runtime. Um, and Michael, in the previous part, discussed a lot on new features that were added and linked also to specific technical priorities. So we do have a list of technical priorities that we want to continue to work on. And this list is, was created and built from, from multiple surveys now that were around the community with a few thousand people each time answering it. And so it's not just priority that we try to found on rolling a dice and, oh, we want to do that on that. It was basically feedback from the community on what was the specific needs or main expectation for the next feature or runtime. Um, as you can see, and I guess it will, it's linked to a lot of what you are doing every day from Node.js having a modern HTTP and working with new, for example, HTTP 1, 2, and 3, uh, the type Discussion is always an odd topic here, so type, TypeScript, and everything around that. Also improving the documentation. You, Michael, discussed a bit about the observability just before, and we had a talk yesterday with Wes and Jen that spoke about that, about observability, something that you need to have in your application. Permission and policy security model, everything around that. Single executable ex uh, application. So quite a lot of topics that basically were discussed and maybe seen 
part of the next 10 firsts, and then people from the community were like keen to spend time and being involved on creating or fixing or improving the ecosystem around that. Also, one other part that we do, and we try to do them between th every three to four months, is what we call collaborator summit and or mini summit. The main idea is to really have a big deep dive into one or two specific topics that are keen to be a change for the community and for everyone. So we already did, in 2021, we spoke a lot about typed and single executable application, and we'll see that a team was created linked to that. We also work about WASM and security model, uh, observability, quite a lot of topic. And we also had this year, and maybe we'll have another one end of the year, about serverless, but also another topic that come back frequently is HTTP and again, types. Types, so everything linked to TypeScript, how to bring TypeScript into the Node.js ecosystem as something that would be a bit more, let's say, a first-class citizen, if I can call it that way. So this is the current initiative. Um, last survey also, because we, I want to go fast on this one, but the main idea is to show to you what we do, also part of the next 10. So the survey, the last one was run six months ago. Main idea, so uh, um, 1,700 feedback from the community, new ID, new initiative that were created around that, following the community need, and for us, it was also a good opportunity to see how Node.js is being used across the ecosystem. Because you could guess that all the initiatives were ba basically created linked to the previous survey, so it was almost the same result. So, and it was really, really useful to us because it was a way to confirm that we were working on the good re direction and everything for the project. We also had something a bit more like complex here with some more specific part on what people want, so consumable API and documentation, uh, maybe more or at least more relevant API in core, and that was mostly linked to, for example, fetch before or other part like that. Um, you also see that there is some part like uh, good CI infrastructure and experience in the project for every contributor that want to contribute to provide the, better, the best experience working on Node.js. Okay, that's good. Um, also, some specific current uh, initiatives uh, that are carried by the next 10. So, a proposal about documentation to improve how the documentation is being used, uh, allow new feature being easier to search for everyone, using JSON, stuff like that. So, this is being championed by Claudio that is in the first, second row with us. So, thanks for that. <laughs> Kudos to you. <laughs> um, also, another initiative that we work on the next 10 and Ulysses deliver a lot of part for the community is like we saw it's really hard to find every information from the Node.js project because it's quite vast. So Ulysses was able to create a full ecosystem and a full solution to, to be able to share the project news as well and it's also continuing to be expanded and you will see a lot more on social media about that and be able to get a lot of news around that. Yeah, I guess that's one we should add to that first list that we had of ways yeah. to follow what's new in the project. But this is the latest one where there's actually a news reader, a news feed, you can listen there and we're trying to get a lot of the project news of great things that our collaborators are doing to be published there. Yeah. And finally, following that and everything from the survey, Michael, we present a bit the new team that were created and also new initiatives that are linked to that. Right, so we just wanted to highlight a few of the, the, the new initiatives and teams in terms of like, you know, us talking about what's new and next in the, in, in the Node.js project. Uh, so over the last, I'd say, six months to a year, there's been a real focus on performance, thanks to Yagiz. And, you know, the, the, the goal has really been to improve performance across the board, but they've done some really great improvements in URL, fetch, and event target. Um, and this is a team that's getting together and, and talking and thinking about performance. We mentioned teams because I think, you know, one of the best ways that the node project itself is actually quite large. And if you try and jump into the core repo, it can be a little bit maybe intimidating or hard to find your footing. Joining one of the teams or getting involved in one of the teams, they're usually a smaller group. They're people who might share an interest that you have. And that's a good way to meet people who might be like mentors or at least point you in the right direction. So that's why it's, it's interesting to point uh, to a few teams. So if you're interested in performance, this would be a great team to sort of meet some like-minded people. Uh, the security is another team that's been very active over the last year. We had some funding from the OSSF, which was great because it enabled not just the work that the person that they funded could do, but they basically reinvigorated the security working group, or the, currently the security team, 
where a lot of other people have come and started to contribute and we've had initiatives like automating our dependencies. We're now doing an audit of how those dependencies are built. There's been work on meeting the OSSF scorecards and so it's really enabled a lot more work on the security front and a lot of progress in terms of you know, the different things that are going on. So again, if you're interested in security, that's a great working group to get involved with. I mentioned single executable applications already, but if that's something that's interested you, package your applications like that, that's a team that you might want to get involved with, and sort of many thanks to Darshan and Joey for moving, moving that forward. Um, UVWASI, this is a new team that we've spun up recently. Colin actually wrote most of the current implementation, but we're really looking for new people to get involved and help maintain that. Um, so if you haven't interested in WebAssembly or WASI, it's a great actual learning experience. Um, we have some people who come from the other companies who are building implementations, and so it's a great way to learn about, for example, what's coming in Preview 2 or what's going on in, in WASM or WASI, WASI in general. So nice concrete place to contribute if you're already sort of node familiar and a great way to learn about what's going on in the, in the bigger ecosystem. Um, the next one is the examples re repository, which Jean is, is sort of uh, picking up the, the championship for. Um, and this is where, you know, the idea is to get out examples of how to use Node.js. We have some examples that are, you know, uh, for example, we have Node on examples, which we found quite useful as a place that, like somebody says, well, how do I do this? You can point them to there. And I think this is, you know, the goal of this is to ex expand it to a whole bunch of different areas. And so, you know, Jean has a, has a number of the different areas where it's like, hey, if there were examples to answer some of those common questions, that's easy, you know, most, rather than trying to answer them one off, like, oh, well, here's an example that shows you how to do that. So that's kind of what that initiative is. And so if you have an interest in, in doing that, you can join Jean in that effort. Um, the next one is the new website team. So Claudio's done a lot of work to get us moved over to a new, more modern implementation. It's been live since 2023, and, and I think that's really reinvigorated the, the, the work on that, that front in terms of Node.js.org. I kind of have them say it looks the same, which is exactly the intention, in that the infrastructure behind the scenes was changed, and the good news is everything else still looks the same, um, so it was successful in that sense. The next step, though, is to actually redesign the, the, you know, the, the, the website itself. Now that we have the infrastructure to do uh, something more modern, more sophisticated, um, there's work in progress on a new design that is tailored for more environments like mobile and so forth. And of course, the goal as always uh, with something like this is to improve the, the overall user experience. So again, that's a team. If you're interested in helping on the website side, um, you know, I know Claudio is looking for people and he's kind of got a PR that says like, hey, we should look at it in four different areas. So, you know, there's quite a broad, broad set of areas and something that you might want to think about getting involved with. At this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Jean. Yep. And for the last part, because we presented a lot of initiative working groups, so how can you, you be involved in one of them or multiple of them if you want? First part is a project is really open to all. So you are all more than welcome to, to come. We showed you the calendar. The first part of the slide, so feel free to just jump in a discussion and let's just basically let's talk about Node.js and what you can do and what we all can do. Uh, there is a lot of different initiatives, so we are speaking about uh, participant, uh, participating to meeting from a wor working group or just being here during a collaborator summit or this kind of event. You can also open an issue, you can help on the documentation, translation, you can be helping on reviewing pull requests, working on a new website, example repository, joining us in the next 10 to, to see what the big initiative that you are keen and want to think would be useful for the next years or so. And one big part in the tech community, it's always, for a lot of people, we all have imposter syndrome, so please d try to, I know it's hard to, to say that, but don't let that stop you, just try to come and join us. Uh, no one understands everything on Node.js, some people are really focused on one area, no one knows everything. Um, and your Node.js skills also are not really 100% relevant. Every part of knowledge from infrastructure, CI, CD, GitHub action, uh, UI, UX experience for the website, everything is and can be used and would be more than welcome to, to join us. So feel free to just discuss with us, with Michael, myself, with everyone from the Node.js team here. I see a few collaborators, so just let's come talk to us and just discuss about if you want to join us or bring some idea on that. 
So yeah, and I think we are almost done. It's the last one, I think. Um, and some idea if you don't know where to start. Uh, CI/CD with Flaky Test, we have that for the past few years. Or this is one good part to to work on. Also helping stabilize the CI. Uh, like I said, improving the documentation. If you want to join on the example initiative, feel free. There is a lot of work to do on a big area on that. Uh, you can participate to every next end meeting, uh, get a community feedback, and work with us on that. So yeah. And that's it. We, we probably have some time for questions. Yep. If anybody has any. Um, you, I think you touched on this a bit that it only runs um, the application that you give to it. It's, and you mentioned that things are smaller. Did you mean? It's not like the, the executable itself won't be smaller because we just bundle extra code into the, the Node.js like EXE or whatever, you know, the, depending on the platform. But it's the surface area that's smaller, right? Like when you install Node, you now have something that can do all sorts of things. That whole API is available to, say, a, a malicious script that somebody might install on the system. And if you've authorized, you know, if you set it up so Node's allowed to run and it can run any, you know, and you can run the script, you can run anything. Whereas when you've bundle it in, we created a single executable application, it's no longer trying to act as a generic node runtime. When, it, when you run it, it runs just the thing which is bundled into it as opposed to providing the whole set of APIs. Uh, okay, have we considered um, tree shaking? So like removing the bits that it doesn't use? There's been discussion, like that's the kind of thing people would love to have smaller node binaries, but it's not an easy, task in terms of things like specifically like tree shaking so for your own application you can apply all those tools before you give the javascript to the node binary itself so what you're bundling in you can apply all those tools but actually pulling things out of node at most not so I shouldn't say most but many of the components are in C, C++. so it's not a matter of just um for what for one they're not in you can't pull them out of the executable easily um, and even at this, that's less of a thing at the C++ level where like, how do you figure out what you're using or not? And we don't want to ship more than one binary for sure. Um, the, the one other thing I was going to say is there, there is one thing I've had in mind that we might do is internationalization. We added that in a few years back because we felt it was time where by default you should be able to support multiple languages. That is a fairly good chunk of memory in the, or space in the binary. That's something that if we might apply the single executable approach and stick it into a segment, you could potentially strip that out afterwards. And yeah, I was going to ask, uh, to, to add just that was, this idea of tree shaking the full, let's say final, final bundle and stuff like that, was one of the main discussion we had when we creating, when the, this working group was basically created, it was how can we, can we reduce the global size of something and yes, the part from, uh, yeah, to keep maybe English as the first one or default one and be able to pass a flag if you want other language being added to the translation when it's bundled. Do you have some other question? Yes, if not, uh, thanks, thanks for coming. Thank and you. And I think I'll just re, just before we say goodbye, the, the last thing is just to reinforce Sean's comment, which was about Feel free to join their meetings. They're all open. The project really tries to be as transparent as possible. And we find everybody who comes brings some specific expertise, which they may not realize is really useful for the project, but it is. So I, I, I just emphasize this because lots of people are like, is it okay if I join the meetings? It's like, yeah, they're all open. The, 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 the meeting links are in the calendar. So please show up and everybody will be nice and very welcoming. So. Yep. Thank you.